Monster Jam. The best of Volume 3. Pablo Huffaker comes home to Texas and destroys the Gravedigger in a Monster Jam Big D style. So don't lose your skin about it. Inside Monster Jam is coming at you. Jerry Bernardo gets the keys to Scott Hartsock's Gunslinger and tears up Charlotte Motor Speedway. Stay tuned to IMJ. Test, test. The pressure cook was on for my buddy Mike right here. Last week, you had to remove all the dirt from the AMA Supercross here in Dallas and turn it into what is now behind us. You only had 14 hours. 14 hours, Jerry, something that normally takes two days. Unbelievable. How'd you do it? A lot of coffee, a lot of snicker bars, a lot of hard work from US Hot Rod and the Dirt Works guys. Ready to roll here with the monster truck? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, it's Texas Stadium, and we're going to go off. It's all going to break loose. Showtime. Showtime inside Monster Jam. Don't go anywhere. Repeat after me, Dallas. Monster! Monster! Track announcer Terry Boyd gets the Dallas crowd pumped up for 10 monsters inside Texas Stadium. Okay, we've got a lot of good trucks here today. There's some competition out there. Is there anybody that the gunslinger fears? Which I know the answer is no, but... Well, of course not. You know, we got Reptoid over here. We got special bullets for him. Monster Patrol, hey, I think we can take him out first round. Bigfoot, hey, I've never hung a Bigfoot on the wall, but hey, I got me some bullets for him too. Well, we get extreme here. Dallas, U-turn course. Nice tacky mud. Is it going to be challenging for you? It's going to be real challenging. I think it's up to anybody today. It's going to be great out there. It's slippery. It's muddy. And we're going to all tear it up. We're here in Dallas getting ready to talk to Pop. We're here in Dallas getting ready. What? Wait, wait, wait. The bridge if we guard. wanted some help from you, the bridge guard. just you keep get... signing. <laughs> you get up there. Wait, I'm supposed to be serious now. We're here in Dallas getting ready to talk to Pablo, driver of the Grave Digger. Maximum security. Nobody gets near this rig big time. Nobody can touch it. Nobody can drive it. Can I drive it? No. Please? No. I got money. No. Okay. I'm looking around. I go, where's Digger? And I just see this mass throng of people and you over here. Booming autographs like you read about. Oh, yeah. The, the Digger fans are out in force tonight. I hope that we can go out here and, and represent the Grave Digger the way it ought to be. They've been doing all this candy racing here lately. Oh. We're going to show them how the big boys run. Oh, boy. I think we're going to close on that note. No candy racing here in Dallas. Now, the Muddy U-Turn course claimed its first victim when Mike Grovick in Priority One, racing against Bigfoot and Dan Runty, turned it upside down. Never let it be said that the Priority One doesn't go for it. That's right. That's right. We're going to do it every single show if we have to, whatever it takes to turn the crowd on. It was a close race between Lil Tiger and Texas Wild Card driver Jack Kobima and Cyborg, who had to be shut down via the RII when he got crossed up after the finish line. The combination of a muddy track and the Grave Digger always makes for exciting racing. Driving in front of his native Texas crowd, Pablo Huffaker almost flipped over against Jim Jack and Reptoy. He saved the Chevy and rocketed across the line for the win. In the next round against Tom Mintz and Monster Patrol, though, Huffaker violently tossed the digger over, totally destroying the fiberglass body. With the truck wreck, nobody in the crowd thought that they would see the Grave Digger back anytime soon. But in wild digger fashion, Grave Digger and Huffaker rolled back out for freestyle. And can you believe it? He rolled over one more time. a dull day when the dig is in the house or well, what is left of the grave digger call dennis yeah dennis we dug the grave <laughs> what happened <laughs> actually first round they came around the um corner racing monster patrol i was a little bit ahead of him i thought man i'm not gonna let tom get ahead of me on this deal and beat me he's been beating me pretty bad a few times this year so i just put the foot to it never lifted Got stupid in between the cars, got stupider over the second jump, and um, end over end she went. I think you reached full hero status when you came back out, minus the shell. I mean, the crowd was going off. <laughs> well, that's one good thing about these trucks, is they're, they're fully functional without the body, so 
Take the body off, you still got a digger. There's Just probably a little bit of a curiosity factor going on. You don't have to give us an exact number, but the shell and the paint job, about how much did you just throw down the tube? Uh, $5,700, I think. Nope. Hey, has anybody got six grand for my buddy Pablo? Uh, he's really happy and he I won't get paid this year. No, it's <laughs> ugly, isn't it? You helped us with a beautiful Inside Monster Jam moment. Make great television, and I'm glad you're healthy because safety is a major factor here. We were strapped in with a five-point harness and a nice helmet and everything, right? Yeah. Ignition no, interrupter, the whole deal. No, everything worked just like it's supposed to. I mean, here I am. It's just all your clothes came off. Yeah. Look. Uh, woo. <laughs> Monster Patrol lined up solo in the semifinal round when Gunslinger suffered transmission problems. That gave Tom Vince the opportunity to do his no-hander over the jump. Dan Runty and Bigfoot would then come on to tame Little Tiger to advance to the main event. We'll have the final showdown between the two legendary trucks from Dallas's Texas Stadium later in the show. After one of the most vicious crashes of the season, IMJ cameras went down on the floor to get the dirt. This is what we call the little piece of the priority one, but then we have like almost the whole digger over there. We got problems here, people. That's one 900 Dennis Anderson. Penalty points for Pablo Huffaker. <laughs> He's gonna call up, yeah, Dennis, uh, the truck, well, I got the inside, but the outside, you know that one door we got? I still got it, right? <laughs> Problems, ladies and gentlemen. I think it'll be all right. <laughs> my mom is going to be so upset about this. Have you seen what you did to my monster truck? Oh, it wasn't you. Pablo from Santa. Is he okay? Oh, yeah. He's fine. Yeah. You ever stop smiling? No, no. Give me a he hug. came out of it just fine. See? Since she loves him, so cute. The monster truck wife. I'm bringing her home. He's a nut. All the data drivers. More IMJ from Nashville, right after this. Did I say it right? Calm, calm down just a little bit. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. More IMJ from Nashville, right after this. Fifty-two thousand seven hundred and sixty-four people came out for a Bayou Mini Sprint blowout inside the Superdome. Number ninety-six, Dennis Billings in blue, held the early lead until number ninety-six X Dan Thompson slid underneath and took the early lead. Now Billings waited until the final lap to try and make his move back into the top spot. Thompson though holds the inside line to the finish, taking the checkered flag, but paid the ultimate price when he slammed it full speed into a stalled Mini. Boy, as you see it again, there is no place for Thompson to go to avoid the carnage, but he emerged out of it without a scratch and a well-deserved victory. More Inside Monster Jam after this. More Inside Monster Jam after this. Extreme Shuffle. Children of all ages are dancing in their seats for the Louisville Cycle Jump-Off Contest. Although all of the competitors bought some major air and did some cool moves, there was an undisputed winner, Rob Cook, who came up with a fan favorite, the heel clicker. Unlimited dragster tractors. Even Charlotte Motor Speedway mascot Lugnut wouldn't miss the unlimited dragster tractors inside the Charlotte Coliseum. In the preliminary hook, Bill Lawrence and his methanol-powered Randy Canadian pulled a respectable 185-11 for fourth. In the pull-up, North Carolina native John Powell and his rolling thunder came home and pulled 195.8 feet. That was good enough for victory over Steve Klingenberg's bad habit and Tom Morsey's Groundhog 2. It's been real nice to come home and pull for a hometown crowd. And we really appreciate it. With over 20 years of experience under his belt, Powell kept the weight down low to the ground, which gave the traction needed for Rolling Thunder to get the victory. Jerry, sh oh, okay, you're gonna give me a countdown. Okay. Jerry, show me your best monster moment. Monster moment. It was October 1993, inside the Pontiac Silverdome, when Ken Deppy and Rampage were coming through the whoop section. The front wheels of the Dodge Express got hooked in the dirt, and he crashed this one hard in front of 40,000 spectators. Ken Deppy tried to take care of the moguls, and the moguls took care of him. I stayed in the power, hoping that the front end would bring itself back out, but it's too far over. The front end, 
front wheels. I just watched on the video. Front wheels are spinning hard, but they weren't, they weren't touching the dirt. We may have some body damage. We may have a little more than that, but the number one thing is you're okay. One more time for Ken Debian of the Dodge Express. Did I tell you we had great footage from the IMJ vaults? You got to listen to me. I got the inside scoop. Hey, how come your brother's not talking to me? I don't know. He's shy. I, I think you should watch more monster truck racing. You want to see more monster? All right, that's enough. ESPN2, check it out. Thunder Nationals. Inside the Van Andel Arena in Grand Rapids, Michigan, Mike West and his jet quad kamikaze got the sold-out crowd fired up for Thunder National Monster Truck Racing. The engine itself is a 1,500 horsepower engine out of an Army helicopter. As far as speeds, uh, quite literally, the top speed is pretty well endless. Uh, with the, the thrust of the engine, it'll literally accelerate till the rubber flies off or the driver flies off. Um, but that's, that's an uncontrolled situation. We're very controlled as far as what we do. Uh, there's enough safeties on it that the, our speed is very well regulated. Uh, from a dead stop in an eighth mile, we can run about 120 in an eighth mile from a dead stop. Uh, with the jet engine, if you've got a little bit of a roll, we have, we've ran this one at a, up to about 130 in about three seconds. So it, uh, it's quite, quite powerful. In night one qualifying, Kirk Dabney and extreme overkill on the left of your screen used the good air to route Tim Kessmer and Hercules. Then it was Norman Miller and Barefoot showing off the Dodge's horsepower as he knocked Jeff Cook and Warwagon off the grid. Charlie Pawkin and Excalibur are always tough on the concrete floors of the Thunder National Series. He licked fast qualifier Hercules and advanced to the final round. Although Extreme Overkill stomped out Barefoot in the other semifinal matchup, he damaged the suspension on his Ford, giving the Dodge a free pass to the final round. Excalibur stayed low over the crush cars and took the night one Thunder National victory with the win over Barefoot. Tonight uh, felt really good. I was really confident in the truck. Um, the main thing on a short course like this is getting the whole shot. Uh, I was trying to take no chances whatsoever. Get them off the whole shot, stay into it, and uh, be done with them. Pocket's autograph was a hot commodity the next night at the pre-race autograph session. In front of another sold-out crowd, he picked up right where he left off by conquering Hercules in the semifinals. In the weekend finale, Extreme Overkill locked up on the line, giving Excalibur the easy run to the finish line for the weekend sweep. Final race here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I took no chances. I, uh, I put the thing in second gear for a takeoff. Uh, made sure I was power brake the thing up as high as it would stall before it just started inching forward. And uh, once that light turned green, I didn't look back and just nailed it. Arena Cross. Great racing and a family atmosphere kept the kids mesmerized inside the Arco Arena. 16-year-old Donovan Mitchell broke out with the whole shot aboard the number eight Yamaha. Hard-charging Travis McDonald cut the inside line and rocketed by on the Honda CR125. For the first six laps, these two riders swapped the lead back and forth. Mitchell retook the lead and made this one stick for the win. More great racing from Arena Cross. Hey, you like that? Yes. You want a million dollars? Just say yes to everything I say, okay? Okay. All right. Now we're going to go to the JAMA question of the week, and I bet you have no idea what it is. See these two guys? You don't have to go far to find Grave Digger fans. Grave Digger, number one, huh? Yes. See, he just says yes. Check out Suave IMJ producer Jason. He finds a willing jammer volunteer and gives her some advice. Jammer question of the week. Hi, my name is. Hi, my name is Melissa Melina. The jammer question of the day is how tall are the tires used on a monster truck? Hi, my name is Melina. The jammer question of the week is how big are the tires used on a monster truck? A, 100 by 50. B, 79 by 34. C, 66 by 43. Hi, uh, I, I'm Eric Tack from Bigfoot. I drive Bigfoot number 11. I have the, uh, uh, <laughs> Hi, I'm Eric Tack. I'm driver Bigfoot number 11, and I have the answer to the inside jammer question of the week. Nice try, Eric Tack, but Eric Meager has it in the bag. Hello, I'm Eric Meager, driver for the Bigfoot team, and I have the answer to this week's jammer question. A monster truck tire is actually 66 inches tall, 43 inches wide, 
These particular tires you see here can weigh anywhere from 650 pounds to 850 pounds. Each individual groove you see coming across the tire, like I said, it was done by hand. The time and process it takes is actually 40 man hours per tire. It's a lot of time and a lot of work, but a lot of weight comes off of the truck and times that by four, you're talking about a lot of weight that needs to go for forward fast. When it comes to JAMA questions, they're only going to get trickier. How many of you knew the answer to that one, huh? Hello, I'm Dan Allen from New York. We're here to kick Chicago's butt. You stay tuned to IMJ. Or IMJ Racing. Although there are no points involved in regional quad action, the rivalry between Team New York in black and Team Chicago in white had the sellout crowd at the Rosemont Horizon juiced up. Number 24, Ricky Vogel of Nassau County, New York, was seeing stars after he hits race leader Chuck Miller on the descent after the jump. Vogel would be okay. Now, more wreckage at the back of the pack when two Team Chicagoans mix it up on the jump. Neither one of them would be seriously injured, although they were both clearly shaken up. Now, on the last lap, you knew this was going to be a tight one. Keep your eyes on the front of the pack. Number three, Richie Tompkins trying to hold off number one, Dan Allen. And in midair, they get tangled up and over they go in a tremendous crash. Tompkins gets up, shaken up indeed, but he's still moving. Dan Allen was okay as well. And Bobby Cox, the clown, with an assist for Richie Tompkins as he gets to carry the checkered flag around the Rosemont Horizon. On to arena cross action. Number 52, Tom Luther moves by Mark Queen on the tight corner for the early lead. Now by the final lap, number nine, Jimmy Ramda had moved out front and caught the back of the pack while two riders were chasing him in second place. They touched tires and that allowed Ramda to bring the checkered flag back home to the folks in Oswego, Illinois. Monster trucks. Time out for a pop quiz. What do the drivers do before their names are called? A, work on their trucks. B, eat a well-balanced meal. C, plot a winning strategy. Sure they do, but they still know how to have a good time. Tony Farrell and Wild Thang blasted out of the box at the sold-out new Nashville Arena. He had no problems in his opening round matchup with the original monster truck, Bigfoot. But Eric Meager and the Ford remain in the grid as the fast loser. In the other first round action, Tom Mintz and Monster Patrol sent Alan Pizzo and Predator packing. Mr. Consistent Gary Porter and Carolina Crusher stayed true to his nickname with an upset of Dennis Anderson and Gravedigger. A wild thing was forced to take it slow over the crushed cars in the semifinal round when Monster Patrol blew out his transmission. Farrell went to the finals. As for Meager and Bigfoot, they took advantage of their second chance in the grid, capitalizing on Carolina Crusher's mistake to advance to the finals and a round one rematch. Even though Porter didn't get to the finale, he put on quite a show in freestyle, christening the new arena with his trademark donut. What do you say now, sir? Gary Porter and the Carolina Crusher! The oldest and newest trucks on the U.S. HRA circuit faced off in a Music City blowout. Bigfoot rarely loses two in a row to an opponent, and this time, Meager enacts a bit of revenge for that first round loss. He destroyed Tony Farrell and Wild Thing to give the Big Blue Ford the victory in Nashville. I am Joe Feature. We all love to see monster trucks fly through the air and turn on their sides and crash. But what we may not realize is just how safe these drivers have to be each time they strap themselves in one of these rigs. And I'm sitting here with Dennis Anderson, driver of the Grave Digger. And Dennis, I guess to get things started, tell us a little bit about some of the protective gear that you guys are required to wear by the United States Hot Rod Association. Well, for one thing, we've got a fire suit. We have to wear a fire suit. We've got onboard fire extinguisher system. Uh, if the truck rolls over and you have a, uh, and you have a fire from uh, you know, fuel or oil hitting the hot headers, we wear all these patterns to keep hurting your, uh, your your collarbone, your shoulder. But um, once you get hemmed in here, man, you can you can hang in it upside down. You just got to remember when you're upside down, don't don't hit your release latch until you got yourself taken care of. Opinion: What's the most important safety feature aboard a monster truck? I'd say, on a driver's point of view, it would be my roll cage, my roll cage, my seat, and my lap belts, and my shoulder harnesses. When you're tumbling the truck over, turning the truck over, that's when I'm feared getting hurt the most. And uh, we we built an awesome roll cage and all the Grave Digger uh, race trucks. And um, and as a lot of people know that I I test them myself. I mean, they, I roll these trucks over hard. Hey, thanks, Adam. You got to be safe when you're out there having that much fun. 
But when we return on Inside Monster Jam, Jerry Bernardo takes the gunslinger out for a test drive. Stay with us. Now it's time for three moments. Now it's time for Monster Moment. Monster Moment. From deep within the vaults at IMJ headquarters, I'm proud to present to you this week's Monster Moment from 1982. Over 70,000 fans and media from around the free world came out to the Pontiac Silverdome to witness the first running at a USHRA event of Bob Chandler's Bigfoot. With thousands of camera flashes lighting up the darkened dome, the four-wheel drive F-250 pickup truck began what was known as a car-crushing exhibition. With technological advances in steering, braking, shocks, and safety, car-crushing evolved into the modern-day monster truck race. Thanks to one man and his truck named Bigfoot, over 300 big-wheeled monsters now compete throughout the world. Okay, Jerry, here we are, Charlotte Motor Speedway. It's your turn to take this gunslinger for a ride over the cars. You yeah, ready? We've, we've been talking about this for a while, huh? Yeah, it's been going on a couple of months now. The day has come. Hey, and the time. Look at it's greasy, too. It is. Think I'm going to get squirrely? Hey, I think you are squirrely, my friend. <laughs> I just hope you can hold on that steering wheel, match the gas, and... Put her down the other end of that truck. Nice and smooth. How many people do you let drive the gunslinger? Nobody. How much does the gunslinger one. cost? You're looking at a, you're sitting in a hundred thousand dollar race vehicle. And we're gonna jump too. None of us just flat stuff. No, we're gonna jump. Yeah. Do you think you're goofy? I'm goofy for letting him drive. It's all good on IMJ. <laughs> We just want to have fun. Can we have a little bit of fun? Hey, let's have some fun. Okay. We're cock locked, ready to rock. Get in. The roller over the first set of cars and I'm going to shut you off. Okay. All right? And I'll, 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 I'll stage you and I'll keep my eye on you. Okay? Well, Jerry, you did a fine job. That thing left real good, went over that first set of cars there, caught a little air come in here and you got a little crossed up there going to that second set but man i tell you what you're you got the neck i was trying to shut it off before the second set but i wasn't sure what was going on then i tried to back it up like a pro he taught me to put it in reverse pretty simple <laughs> and like i was turning and the wheel wasn't going what happened it looks like we got a hydraulic hose broke something that's real simple we'll get it fixed and we'll come back here so it wasn't me then no not at all not at all How i don't know look? you might have been grabbing hold of the steering wheel so hard you might have choked the fluid right out of it it's pretty cool though i mean there's a <laughs> lot of power it is not very many people power. get to do that stuff right in front of uh the fans here at U.S. Truck Fest, dude. Pretty man. good. Seriously. All right, Jerry. That was fun. Sorry about the hose. Hey, what's that like? A few bucks? Yeah, or... two, three bucks. You know, don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> Outlaw Quad Boys. Inside the U.S. Air Arena, emotions were at an all-time high between Team North and the home whites and Team South and Black. With an opportunity to tie up the Outlaw Quad War Series, Randy Dickens moved into the lead, but handed the top spot back when he crashed off the jump. On the second to last lap, Mike Snug was firmly in command of the race, but he lost the sure victory when he had trouble in the whoop section. That blunder gave Team North the win and moved them into a tie after eight rounds of intense quad war action. Both teams will be looking to move ahead at the next round in Jacksonville, Florida. Stadium Rough Trucks. They were packed to the rafters inside the San Antonio Alamo Dome as 48,133 fans rallied behind native daughter Jennifer Champion. She showed the guys how it's done as her Chevy pickup plays to the final round. Many of men have traditionally crumbled their trucks on the whoop section of the track. But with the home crowd behind her, Champion broke away and set the fastest time for the win. Would you be psyched for her? I mean, it's about time, right? Yeah, it is. I mean, women are good, I mean, but... I don't know if I can see him winning a tough game. Yeah, well, what if she beat you, though? <laughs> that would be scary. Yeah. Would I don't know. Your don't... whole image down the tubes. She'd probably get my job. It's all over. In the scene, I'll be Jerry Bonato, host <laughs> IMJ, and you'll be Dan Wendy, driver of this fine vehicle, Bigfoot. Tell me about the truck itself, you know, the little tidbits, the ins and outs, like a closer look. Um, this has actually got a 572 Ford Hemi in it. Most of the trucks that we run have wedge motors in it, so we're dumping about 200 more horsepower out of this truck than we do any of the other ones. I mean, basically the shocks are all the same, 30 inches of travel in the front, 18 in the back, tire size is the same, center seat. We just go out there and run. I like to know the numbers, you know. This thing, if I went to walk into the monster truck showroom floor and I had a fat pocket, how fat would it have to be? Honestly, probably it would cost 150000 to build a truck similar to this one. Bob would never sell this truck for $100,000. Probably $200,000. Yeah. You might be able to get it away from him. 
38,900 fans came out to the first ever USHRA-sanctioned off-road event. And IMJ cameras were in place to capture all the action in the Thunder Truck class. On the off-road course that contained some 3,500 yards of dirt instead of the usual 1,200, some of the trucks had an easier time navigating the track than others. That caused a few headaches at the bottleneck, which forced some drivers to bang their way through the holdup. Now, out front, number 737, Lee O'Donnell and his Toyota pickup jetted into the lead and kept Lonnie Andrews at bay for the victory. Hello there. My name is Mike McFarlane. I'm the U.S. Event Hot that's wrong. We got what I refer to as mud bog material here. How much dirt did you have to bring in to make this track in Dallas? We got about 10,000 tons here. Um, actually, it, it's not as bad on most of it as it looks right now. We were lucky enough to get most of it covered before we got started. Yeah. How long did it take you to fabricate this place? How many man hours? How many guys? We got a crew of about eight guys, uh, plus the local help, the guys running the trucks and stuff. We knew it was going to rain, so actually this one, we did it in about a 30-hour period. We did it in a day and a half straight. Without a doubt, the biggest fans of monster truck racing definitely have to be the kids. This feature we're going to show you right now is right up their alley. Let's have a look at it. I am Galactron, a transforming land cruiser. I have been sent to this planet from a starship of the Freedom Federation. It's officially Dave Wyzorek, the man who's responsible for Galactron and Reptile. Right. Who dreamed up that thing? That thing. That thing's crazy. I did. I, I built him from start to finish. I am a fighter for all that is good. There's a total of about 42 different switches in here that we use. Um, each one gets moved at least once during the whole transformation progress. I am now detecting the presence of an alien force not of this planet. Reveal yourself. When we come up with an idea, uh, well, let's just add another transformer in there, you know, one that, that, would, that he would battle with and destroy it. Evil against good. I am Reptar. We have uh, the fire, we have the special effects, which is a pyrotechnics part of it for the concussions, the booms, uh, the shots, the, the germs we use for the shots. So we have all the lights that, that go on in a turbine. We have a jet engine in the silver one for a, an, an added effect. Dave, he can build you some stuff, come to your house, maybe work on that Toro Moa, change it around. It can cut the lawn by itself, right? That's right, that's right. Yeah, round and round, squares, whatever yeah, you want. You just stand there and have a little pina colada with an umbrella in it. Well, maybe you could have that. Well, yeah, I'll watch them home. Perfect. Right. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Now, that Galactron Reptar act looks pretty simple. Notice that as Reptar rises, he's intact. When he gets shot, his stomach blows out. Much to the horror of the USHRA staff during the Saturday matinee show, he rises with a little something missing. I love it at Monster Jam! Getting all the action that you want at home, it's time for the in. No. Are you guys getting all the action you want at home? Now it's time for the Monster Jam. Jam. Uh... Ready? Told you we'd give you all the action you so richly deserve in the home viewing audience. Now it's time for the Jam of Question of the Week. Get out your pens and paper. Try again. Oh, wait, that was right, wasn't it? Jammer Question of the Week. Hi, I'm Whitney, and my jammer question for the week is, how much Sometimes you need a little practice before it's perfect. Track. Hi, I'm Whitney, and my jammer question for the week is, how much dirt does it take to build a monster truck track? A, 1,000 in an arena, 3,500 in a stadium. B, 800 in an arena, 2,000 in a stadium. Or C, 500 in an arena, 900 in a stadium. Well, that's a fantastic question. My name is Mike McFarlane. I'm the event director here at the U.S. Hot Rod Monster Jam in El Paso. Other times, you need a lot. Hello there. My name is Mike McFarland. I'm the event director for the U.S. Hot Rod Grand Slam Monster Jam here in El Paso, Texas. I've got the answer to the jammer question of the week. When we do shows at an arena, it's 800 cubic yards of dirt. And when we do shows at stadiums, it's 2,000 cubic yards of dirt, which is enough dirt to cover two football fields six inches deep. Makes for some great racing. Thanks for your question. Pro Modified Sandra. In front of 57,247 fans, Dan Cooper had his Little Beaver all revved up and ready for action at the Georgia Dome. All that hard work on the Little Beaver paid off when he clicked off the fastest run of the evening, a scorching 1.789 second dash through the 100-foot pit. 
Now, the same can't be said for Joe Villarreal, who rolled Joey Quick down the sand drag pit. Amazingly, the 1932 Chevy Coupe stopped inside the shutdown area. His time was good enough for third place as Villarreal escaped without serious injuries. Fred Wilhite had his $80,000 money pit raring to go. When his sand shredding tires finally came to a stop, the money pit had purchased runner-up honors. As you can see, second place can be as exciting as a win. You want to be on TV? Look, turn around. You're going to be on TV. Listen, you want to be on TV or not? Talk to me. <laughs> I'm here with Fred Schaefer. We we're just talking about a couple of things. The thing I liked is you said they're going to pack this place. And what was the number you told me? Oh, 65, 70,000. Not unusual down here. Real uh, enthusiastic crowd down here. Exciting. Um, we got a turning course here, U-turn course. Uh, fans are always like that. Do you think it's getting bigger and bigger? I know it is, but bigger and bigger air year in and year out. Yeah, it is. Uh, more fans, more people to stadiums, more enthusiasm. Uh, trucks are going faster. The trucks are flying higher. I mean, it's, it's not unusual to see this truck 20 feet in the air now. You think 10,000 pounds can fly 20 feet in the air? I could jump over my trailer back here. It's 13 foot high. Real easy. Robert Parker drove Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger hard on the extremely tight U-turn course. He took care of business against Predator in round one, then against Paul Schaefer's Monster Patrol. So no problem for the grave digger to hit the ramp and fully launch over every single, no matter how many cars they put out, full Third air. Hills, walls, it don't matter, you know. We just come out here to get with the program. Mr. Consistency, Gary Porter lived up to his nickname as he drilled Carolina Crusher past Bennett Clark and Clydesdale in round one, then destroyed Fred Schaefer's barefoot and moved on into the final round. Paul Schaefer came back out for freestyle, and he sure didn't disappoint the sold-out Tampa crowd when he broke his rear wheel. I heard thousands of people in this stadium cheer when that thing came off. They loved your freestyle, man. Well, I wanted to put on a better freestyle, and I didn't race that good because I had a brake problem, and I was kind of scared of the truck because it rolled over. But I'm going to be back, and uh, I, I thank all the fans for being out here and supporting us. One thing about it, when this guy gets everything set right, look out, Digger, look out, Barefoot, Monster Patrol is coming to get you. We'll have the final showdown later in the show. All right, Joey, buddy, work with me. Show me all you got. I want to be dizzy. I want to be spinning like the Wizard of Oz. I'm clicking my heels together. Take me home, buddy. Sometimes Take being the host of IMJ it has its perks. Ah, army. This Ow. is not one of them. Joey! <laughs> <laughs> Thrill Seekers On IMJ, we keep the camera lenses clear of the rain to bring you all the action Well, there wasn't much we could do for the L.A. crowd who came out to see Hollywood stuntman Brian Carson attempt the world record car jump In front of 26,000 brave and hardy souls, Carson's car couldn't gather enough speed on the muddy track leading up to the ramp Heroically, he decided to go for it anyhow Watch as he loses traction before hitting up the ramp he just didn't have the speed he needed, ending up well short of the record. Brian, I know you're not a very happy camper right now. I didn't know what we could do. I just gave it like I always have in all my career, 100%. God bless you, L.A. I still love you. It's my hometown. Thank you, Brian. Hey, there's always next year. You know whenever Brian Carson makes another run for the record, IMJ cameras will be on hand to capture the historic moment. All right, Dennis, now we're hanging out. What is this, the haunted house or something? What do you got going out here in the swamp? <laughs> this is just a stage front deal for Halloween. We, um, you know, we put on a big Halloween haunted forest deal, and it was really cool. We had, a, um, you know, the Grim Reaper out here, lights and smoke, pyro. The ride truck came through. We just scared everybody that came through. We had a good time. You guys have a little bit too much time on your hands. Let's go back in time. Talk about the growth. The monster truck race in the United States kind of started out more like car crushing. All right, yeah, it did. It was, um, I mean, we've come a long ways, man. The, the old trucks that used to be, you know, the, the tallest truck with the most Casey lights would win. And, man, back crushing cars, if you ran over two cars and broke the windshield, you know, and you just hit them end for end, you were bad. You know, if you could just get your truck up on the cars and, and look at where we're at nowadays. I mean, those trucks weighed 15, 16,000 pounds. 
we're down to 10,000 pound trucks. We can actually get lighter than that. The trucks have really got a lot of speed to them, and we're clearing, you know, 10 and 15 cars now. Yeah, 10 and 15 cars and landing like, what's the record? Fred Schaefer, 140 feet or something right. like that? Right, it's like, I think it was 148 foot. And Bigfoot done like 137, and I've done 126 or something like that. But um, man, it's, it's the fans, they, they support the monster truck deal, and they really support me strong. I don't have a corporate sponsor, never had one. It's because of my fans, and um, man, it's, it's, you know, we used to go to the little hoodoo fairgrounds and stuff like that and do a tractor pull and run over two cars, and that was cool. You know, there was, you know, there was a thousand people there. It was a big show. Now, the shows that we do now, like the, um, the Astrodome, not long ago, 73,000 people. You don't think you can't get stoking and tear out some equipment with 73,000 people going digger, digger? <laughs> you can trash you it. you got to love it. Dennis Anderson telling it like it is from the heart here in the swamp. Thanks a lot, Jerry, but the only thing cooler than that ramp is the Extreme Zone at the U.S. Truck Fest. Well, I started when I was 12 years old, and um, I started with the most basic maneuvers. Um, and I've been riding now for 14 years, and my styles over the years have, like, changed, you know, as I, as I evolve from one style to the next. I try to have an ambidextrous style where I use both feet and spin in both directions and uh, just try to get overall control of the bicycle. I like to do things that people want to see. Now more racing from Jacksonville. More IMJ racing. After eight rounds in the Outlaw Quad War Series, Team North in black and Team South in white were all tied up in the point standings. On the final lap, number 30, Ted Clark got T-boned by number 19, Darren Brown. After that, it was pure anarchy on the track as the season full of frustration was vented by both teams. Once the dust settled, a two-on-two -two grudge match was declared. On the final lap, number 48, Hank DeHart, and number 99, Randy Dinkins, were neck and neck. Dinkins pulled the North into the lead, only to be passed on the final turn at the finish line. Oh, well, them guys can't play fair. They got to cheat, do anything they can. We come out on top, we prove the South the best. We're going to take it all the way to the final season of the race, and don't burn them out all the way to the end, baby. It's going to be sweet. With their huge, emotional fifth win of the season, Team South hopes to build on the momentum when they head to Minneapolis next time on Inside Monster Jam. You're going to be on TV. 50 million home. Nervous? Yeah. How do you like it so far? Oh, I'm having a great time. Well, it's even going to get bigger right now. We're going to do a piece with my man, Adam Murphy. Adam Murphy? He's cute. Huh? Yeah. The hot throb of IMJ. Check it out. Thanks a lot, Jerry. You've been to Race Rock, and you know it's a lot more than just food. There's all kinds of things on the walls, memorabilia, uh, everything from motorcycles to race cars, and the employees, well, they make you feel like you take home the checkered flag. to work here because the people are all awesome. Everybody who works here, they're either really involved in racing or they don't know a thing about it, but everybody that's here is like a family. I love working in this restaurant. It's a lot of fun. Everyone's nice. All the guests that come in are great. It's a lot of fun. We get a lot of cool tourists coming in and a lot of big parties. It's hard sometimes, but there's a lot of true race fans that come out and see us. It cares about the people that comes in. It's service all the time, uh, very service-oriented. The food's great, and it's fun. Jerry, all this walking and talking has made me hungry, so I'm going to race inside and grab me a bite to eat. Back to you. Thank you, Adam. Thanks a lot. Hey, William, what do you think? It's pretty cool here? Yeah. Who's your favorite truck? Bigfoot. He's doing good tonight, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, you got to get that turn down. All right, stick around because we're going to have more great racing. Oh, I'm sorry. 
I didn't know that move. Huh? Cut, take two, ready? Take two, chill. So I'm gonna race inside and grab me a bite to eat. Back to you. Hey, thanks a lot, Adam. Hanging out with William. Who's your favorite truck? Tell me right now. Bigfoot. You think he's running pretty good? Yeah. Get that turn down. Yeah. Yeah, the kids, they always answer with one question. All right, stick around. More great racing. Monster Trucks. Before the big show, there was no shortage of monster truck fans trying to catch a glimpse of their favorite drivers inside the pit party. We try to make it family-oriented as much as we can. Uh, we love to meet the kids and, and let them learn about our sport and uh, show them what we do. Uh, there's a lot of families come here together and race, and we all get together and try to make it a big, a big time, have a good time for everybody. There you go. You're welcome. Thanks a lot. All right. It's going to be big fun tonight. I mean, no, look at the crowd. Everybody's starting to roll oh, in. It's man. still early. I've signed autographs all day long, and I mean, the people just great coming out here. Right. The noise, the thunder. I mean, my goodness, you can't believe the excitement that's going to be here tonight. Monster Patrol takes out Gunslinger in round one, and Monster Patrol fans would have even more reason to cheer after his semifinal showdown with Dennis Anderson's Gravedigger, driven by Robert Parker. Digger can intimidate a lot of drivers when he heads to the line, but tonight Monster Patrol would not back down. Off the line, the Digger gets a little squirrely. He's just about able to recover and avoid contact, even though he finishes the race literally behind Monster Patrol. Jim Jack and Reptoy tried to stomp out barefoot in the other semifinal round, but was unsuccessful. Later, we'll bring you highlights from the final showdown. Man, those monster truck drivers are crazy. Yeah, man, talk about some mega air. They're so rad, man. All right, we're going to have the final showdown from Miami, but let's look at all the other stuff that's coming up before that. It's going to be cool. We asked for it. Yeah! That's good, yeah! <laughs> Jeremy McGrath, his 44th career Supercross win. His first... I'm Wyatt Seals. I tune for Jeremy McGrath's number one machine. And Jerry, please show me your best monster moment. Monster. It was September 1989 in Flint, Michigan, as Rod Litzow and USA One were in the running for the championship. He won the race, but flipped it over violently on the pavement. Well, what happened is, when I went to clear the last set of cars, the back tires hit the 12th car and went inside the, the car. Was, the seats were down, so the tires actually went down inside the car, and right when that did the impact, just shot the back end up. Despite the severity of the crash, Litzau luckily emerged with only minor injuries. Stadium Rough Trucks. A sold-out crowd of 47,500 packed themselves into the Houston Astrodome for Stadium Rough Trucks Texas style. In qualifying, Jesse Curley was on a top three run when he got up on two reels and rolled it over. He was okay. In the final round, where the top four trucks from qualifying battled it out on the floor of the Astrodome, Barry McElwain and Baja Bucket set the fastest time at 18.56 seconds, but off the final jump of the finish line, the Spring Texas native face-planted the Chevy. Luckily for McElwain, he crashed it after the finish line, giving him the winning time. I'm here with Noel Smith, and he's going to tell me what this contraption is behind me. All I know is we were out in the parking lot, and the hood was open, and there was nothing there. Why? Well, there's a jet intake in that hood area, and the engine runs full through the full length of the truck. It's a 1997 Dodge Ram Club Cab pickup with a J60 Pratt & Whitney turbojet engine with full afterburner. One of the highlights, I think, is your driver, my man right here, Dick Rosper. What's it like to do 300 miles an hour? Uh, it's kind of like telephone poles look like a picket fence. That's it. It's fast, and it will set you back in the seat. In fact, we're probably going to let you sit in it when we start it up if uh, you think you can handle that. I, you know, I did kind of, I was like winking in there. I saw two seats. What do you think? I, I think you ought to do it. Cortez doesn't have the stuff to do it, yeah, I don't He think. wouldn't get in there? No, I don't think so. Well, he has hair, and I go for a ride. Monster Jam. What about that? The guy's telling us to shut it down. He wouldn't. It's like me riding around in circles. You love it or what? Yeah! And the baby gravedigger said, 
I don't want to do the big jump, Daddy. And the mommy gravedigger said, Boys, it's time for lunch. And the daddy gravedigger said, Let's check out Landover Monster Trucks. Monster Trucks. Inside the U.S. Air Arena, New Jersey native Bob Fisher and Liquidator were all horsepower on the straight line course. Liquidator down Brian Welch in Monster Patrol in qualifying, then moved on to the final round where he defeated two-year pro Joe Bagdonis and American Guardian. Jeff Bercy and Toasaurus couldn't make it to the line due to a torn drive shaft. That gave Eric Tack and Bigfoot the bye run. In the next round, Bigfoot did not look smooth over the crush cars, but he sent fast qualifier Monster Patrol back to the pits to figure out what went wrong. This final round had the sold-out crowd dancing in their seats as underdog Bob Fisher and Liquidator edged Eric Tack and Bigfoot in a photo finish. Hey, yeah, it makes us feel good when we win anything, but uh, when we beat the big guys, it's, uh, it's really something for the crew. Outlaw Quad Wars. With the opportunity to tie the series, Team North in white was spurred on by the Minnesota crowd. Now it's number 20, Randy Dinkins, who busted out with the whole shot and then held the lead until there was just one lap to go. However, Dinkins thought the race was over and he prematurely began his cool down victory lap. That would allow Team South's Mike Studden to blow by and he took the lead. And the boos were deafening at this point inside the Metrodome, with Snudden apparently headed to the final corner for the win. But there, number 91, Alex Da Silva hammered the throttle and took not only the lead, but the improbable victory. After 10 rounds of the Outlaw Quad War Series, neither team is able to pull away. Questions, questions. You got questions? We got a jam a question. Hammer a question of the week. Hi, I'm Greg Alvatine with Team Suzuki. My jam a question is. Why does the Rambo monster truck bounce so much? A, springs. B, rubber chassis. C, has super balls for wheels. How you doing? I'm Iron Mike Nisky from the Rambo monster truck, and I have the answer to this week's jammer question. Rambo bounces so much because being one of the original trucks with a stiffer suspension and leaf springs, the leaf springs make it bounce. When you come off the cars, the tires and the weight just makes it carry you through the air and bounce all around. Adam Murphy interviewing Roy Jansen. Important conversations about Supercross. Oh, God. He went into this race wanting to be a spoiler. The first balls are pumping for this young man. We're having the greatest year in the history of the sport. We've been hitting home runs all year. You know, I think there's a number of things that's driving it along. Obviously, the quality TV show, the coverage that we're getting. You know, part of the uh, attraction surely has to be the great racing we've got. For the bar, Henry oh. pops in front. He's in fourth on Emig. Well, I think it's the airtime. I think it's the spectacle of the jumps and, you know, the artificial obstacles. You only need to watch them on the first lap when those guys hit the triple and the folks jump out of their seat. You know what uh, is the attraction here. Future Supercross champion? Maybe in a few years. Evelyn? Evelyn. Yeah, it's been up. Evelyn for a long time. Hi. I hope everybody comes tonight because this is going to be so good and cold. I mean, good and cold. Now what? Now interview me. <laughs> okay. I'm the host of the show. The host for the most right here. Wait, and she's trying to pull my thing down. Ah! I am not. <laughs> well. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't forget to get that. I'll see everybody has fun. Of course. Are you nervous? No, I'm freezing. Okay, group, group hug ready. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, golly. IFJ host Jerry has special charm with all the ladies. The final showdown. Despite the unseasonable cold, Digger and Crusher generated major heat in the finals. Porter's GMC ran flawlessly on the tricky U-turn course as he glided over the cars for the W. Gary, I saw I saw this crowd tonight turn around. They were they were behind you, man, when they saw you go over the line. Great job of driving. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I knew Robert was going to be tough. Uh, you know, he beat me there in the qualifying round. I knew I was going to have to sort of tighten up on my turning and cut it real short and. Uh, you know, I don't know if he messed up or what happened, but I was just glad to take the win here, and uh, I appreciate everybody coming out to see us again. How you doing? I'm hanging out at the kids on here. I had these kids to jump and scream. It was easy and it cost me nothing. We're at the U.S. Truck Fest. We're going to look at more great racing on Inside Monster Jam. More screaming, more jumping.
Monster Patrol and Barefoot faced off in the finals from the Orange Bowl. Off the start, Patrol was a little crooked. It gives Barefoot the extra edge to the finish line and made him this week's 1-900 Pro Race winner. A closer look. I'm Tom Mintz, driver of the Monster Patrol. A few quick facts you might want to know about the Monster Patrol. It's powered by a 540 cubic inch engine, all aluminum, aluminum heads. It's got a full chrome molly frame, front to back. It's 94 Chevrolet. I like to go out there and push the truck to its limit and even beyond. You know, get putting the smiles on their faces is what I enjoy. Outtake, outtake, outtake. You ready? Take a step. Take a deep breath. Breathe. Ready? Okay, our number one monster truck race of the year had to be a digger. Unfortunately, it wasn't you. It was Pablo Hafega, one of the other drivers in Dallas. Man, he tore that thing up. Yeah, he did. He tore it up, and then he just wanted to make sure that he tore it up, so he ripped the body off and came right back in probably 20, 30 minutes later and flipped the truck over again. What do you think when your driver calls you up and tells you he has a bad wreck like that? Well, um... I knew the fans loved it. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of times the guys at the shop kind of hate it, but um, hey, man. Sold me some t-shirts. That's it, man. <laughs> the fans loved it. They yeah. bought souvenirs. The, um, you know, the guys back at the shop, um, they don't like it all the time, but heck, man, that's that's what it's all about, and they know, you know, this, the fans want to see crashing and burning, so, hey, we have it. The final showdown. What better place than Dallas, Texas for the final showdown between the big blue Ford of Bigfoot and the mean green machine of Monster Patrol. As they made the final turn to the finish line, Tom Mintz caught too much air off the jump. That allowed Dan Runty and Bigfoot to pull ahead and become our 1-900 Pro Race Final Showdown winner. Dan, I guess you weren't talking no smack about the Bigfoot taking the overall. Well, yeah, we ran it hard. I mean, I gotta thank Eric and the guys back at the shop. I mean, we got a great bunch of guys back here. Ford and Firestone, I mean, we put it together finally. It took a little bit, but we got it. Yep, good power wheel. He's out of the corner, huh? He should have been a little better. It wasn't quite enough grab there. Usually, we can stand the truck straight up and down. We'll, we'll see if we can't do it next time. How was this sticky dirt? I mean, everybody was hooking up. It was tough to spin around. I mean, it's it's tough, you know. There's a couple guys rolled over, and that's that's no way to go out in a race. I mean, it's expensive, and you got to watch it. it is, it's a, it's awful sticky. That last pass I made there, the front tire come up, but running Tom Mintz, you know you got to run it hard. You know, we come out here and run real hard. We made it to the finals and got beat by a little bit. It ain't too bad. What about that little two-wheeled excursion over there in the corner? Your arm was out the window, the one-hander? Yeah, I just chilling off there a little bit. I thought I had it under control. You guys look good in freestyle, surfing. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, it was a fun time. He's a real good truck to run with in freestyle. You get two good trucks like that, it makes for a good time for the fans. <laughs> All right, Dallas, Texas, inside Monster Jam. That's IMJ Few People. I'm the Deuce. I'm Jerry Bonato. Will you please come back and visit us another time? See this truck? The winner is Bigfoot. That's another great show for Inside Monster Jam, and I want you to watch it. Just because you're driving doesn't mean you don't have to stick around and watch the TV show also. Oh, believe me, I'll be there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shh. That's it for the best of IMJ Volume 3. Thanks for joining in. We'll see you next time.